Hello. For the second year in a row, I am delivering the State of the School Address virtually, rather than in person. This reflects the fact that the COVID-19 pandemic is still very much with us. The Omicron variant has been surging through the nation, and especially in our region. Although it appears to be less dangerous than prior mutations of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, it is highly infectious. The dramatic increase in COVID-19 cases has strained our resources and required that we all must remain vigilant. So, as we assess the state of the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, we need to consider not just the past 12 months, but the full 23 months since COVID-19 first struck New York City. It has been an unprecedented time, and it's been a tremendous challenge for all of us as individuals and collectively as members of the ICON Mount Sinai community. We face great adversity. Adversity, however, reveals character. And the character of ICON Mount Sinai is to confront adversity to persevere and to prevail. This is what we do. We push the boundaries of science and medicine to find new ways of healing those who are suffering. Mount Sinai Hospital identified New York City's first case of COVID-19 on February 29th, 2020. Within days, COVID-19 would hit the city with the force of a tsunami. Facing an unprecedented health crisis, the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, as a community, responded courageously. Ours was a selfless response, one that demonstrated both commitment and compassion. Commitment to science and medicine, and compassion for the ill. We didn't know the origin of the virus. We didn't know its precise mode of transmission. We didn't even know how to treat COVID-19. Even so, the faculty bravely stepped forward to treat thousands of severely ill and highly contagious COVID-19 patients. Before there was any immunological protection against the coronavirus that would be labeled SARS-CoV-2, the only defense we had was N95 masks and other personal protective equipment. Our highly trained specialists checked their egos at our hospital doors. They helped any way they could, assisting emergency doctors, pulling oxygen tanks, doing whatever needed to be done. We were all in it to save lives, plain and simple. At the same time, the Icon Mount Sinai faculty continued to teach online. Outside their virtual classrooms, our students jumped into actions. During the height of the pandemic, the student workforce provided more than 2,000 volunteer hours a week, an impressive demonstration of our students' commitment to their chosen field. Icon Mount Sinai's researchers fought COVID-19 with science. In the labs of Mount Sinai, they worked day and night to understand the virus and the disease, determine how best to treat it, and generate fundamental discoveries that enabled the health system to swiftly mount a strong counterattack. Among their many contributions is a test that identifies and quantifies COVID-19 antibodies, an assay that would become the world's gold standard. And today, an effective low-cost vaccine that our researchers have developed is now in clinical trials in Vietnam, Thailand, Brazil, and Mexico. Icon Mount Sinai met the challenge of COVID-19 head on. We saved thousands of lives, advanced science and medicine, and continue to educate our students. COVID-19 has tested us as severely as any health crisis Yes, some of us experience scars, understandably, 
that as a group, our faculty, staff, students, and trainees showed their mettle. Once you are battle-tested as we were, you recognize your possibilities and how much you're capable of. And now, after confronting the challenge of COVID-19, we have emerged stronger and more resilient than ever. As your dean, I take great pride in what we've accomplished during the pandemic, as should everyone in the Mount Sinai community. Your performance during the last 22 months has been inspiring and helped carry us forward into a year of remarkable growth and achievement. It has also reinforced our mission and strengthened our resolve to achieve breakthroughs in biomedicine that improve patients' lives and to provide an outstanding education for the next generation of great physicians, research scientists, and healthcare leaders. We have emerged stronger than ever in relationship to educating uh, our students and other trainees, providing outstanding clinical care, and conducting groundbreaking research. So what I'm gonna do now is, is review uh, with all of you more specifically what our accomplishments have been. So we continue to be recognized for outstanding research excellence. We're currently ranked 14th in NIH funding in terms of absolute funding. Many of our departments, as you can see on the slide, are ranked among the very top research departments in the country. When you look at research dollars per scientist, which is a index of how excellent our researchers are, we're literally in the top one or two or three uh, medical schools in the country in terms of research dollars per scientist. We're doing great by both uh, objective measures and, and more subjective measures in terms of the quality of our science. So if you go to the next slide, you'll see that over time, uh, the amount of NIH funding has uh, increased uh, dramatically over the years and uniformly it has increased on a percentage basis more than the NIH uh, increases in general. As I mentioned, you know, many of our departments are among the very best in the country, if not the world, in terms of the quality of the science. This looks at the level of NIH funding, but that's an imperfect measure. And, and as I've mentioned uh, over and over again, what Mount Sinai science is all about is not just getting grants, which we're very good at, or publishing papers in top journals. It's making discoveries that make a difference in the lives of our patients. And that's what Mount Sinai scientists do, year in and year out. Our scientists and clinicians have been recognized by awards and other types of recognition over the past years. And this slide just is really a snapshot of some of the recognition that our scientists have gotten, including becoming a Howard Hughes investigator, including being recognized for a lifetime of research, and our students are being recognized for what they've done already in the beginning of their careers. In the past roughly you know, 22 months, uh, we've developed, established a number of new initiatives that are listed on this slide. We're always evaluating not only the quality of our science, but the broad spectrum of what we are doing. We're always looking at ourselves and saying, are we missing something? Um, are there certain areas of research that we ought to be investing more heavily in or recruiting uh, more scientists and clinicians? And what this slide reflects is a lot of things that we've done over the last year or two in establishing new research centers, new research-related institutes. And I want to point out one aspect of this slide, and that is that recently, over the last few months, we have established a new academic department, and that is the Department of Artificial Intelligence and Human Health under the leadership of Thomas Fuchs. And we believe that is the first such department 
established in any medical school uh, in the United States. And again, it reflects us always looking forward, trying to anticipate uh, where science is going to take us. Uh, many new appointments over the last uh, year or two. Uh, again, you could look at this in more detail at your leisure. Uh, many new deans have been named at the level of dean, senior associate dean, and also associate dean. And also uh, a number of very important new appointments at the level of department chair, chief of divisions, institute directors, and key administrative leaders for our school and our health system. We take great pride in our mentorship provided uh, to our students, other trainees, and uh, younger faculty. Uh, so we have established a number of different programs uh, led by Jonathan Ripp, Lauren Pecorello, Emma Ben, and others that are focused in providing mentorship uh, providing ways to advance in one's career and ultimately to become leaders in their own right. And associated with this, there are many opportunities uh, listed here uh, for career growth, for our investigative track faculty. We've also paid a lot of attention to promoting women in leadership roles at Mount Sinai and there also will be a focus on other uh, groups that tend to be under uh, recognized in terms of leadership uh, positions. Uh, here what's shown is the number of assistant professors, associate professors, full professors, department chairs, and others that now are led uh, by women faculty. And notably there have been a number of uh, women that have taken important leadership roles at the school uh, notably listed here, Carol Horowitz as Dean for uh, Gender uh, Equity in Science and Medicine, and Tony Stern, Amy Kelly, and, and Jenny Lynn have also taken on other important leadership positions in this area. As always, our medical education team is attracting a diverse group of the best and brightest students in the country. And what this slide lists is some of the characteristics of the entering class over the last several years, both in terms of the, quote, regular MD component of our uh, class and our FlexMed uh, program. Very successful exposure to research on the part of our students prior to coming uh, to Mount Sinai. And you can see here that 80% 80, 80 had published while in training. Uh, here and 32% published in four or more journals. So great, great accomplishments in uh, science and medicine. We s strongly support uh, diversity and growing external uh, partnerships in our graduate school of biomedical uh, science. And we are also attracting the best and the brightest uh, graduate students to our graduate uh, school. And this slide th does also uh, list the external partnerships that we have recently established. And we think that's very important uh, for the research environment uh, at Mount Sinai to bring in uh, expertise from very important uh, affiliations. We are a leader in graduate medical education. In fact, our graduate medical education program remains the largest in the United States. We train 2,649 residents and clinical fellows in 250 GME programs. And you can see here that eight new ACGME accredited programs have been established in 2021. Many of our programs are ranked among the very top programs in the United States. And we also have a couple of new ACGME fellowships under development. Our students and trainees responded courageously to the pandemic. They did so many things that helped us deal with the fight against uh, this virus, and they are listed here. So it just as an exemplifies the quality of our students 
the passion of our students and showing that they care so much of providing great care to the very sick and the underserved. We are all under great stress associated with this uh, pandemic, uh, particularly those at the very front line who are really in the fight against this virus starting back in March of 2020, and that continues to the present day. And we have a motto, uh, and that is we take care of our own. So we have established a number of different programs to take care of our own, to take care of our well-being, to take care in enhancing our resilience and issues related to depression and anxiety and stress. So what's listed here is many of the programs that we have established and our faculty that are playing key roles in, in providing resources to enhance well-being, to enhance resilience, and to provide treatment when needed for issues related to depression, anxiety, and other issues. Over the last year or two, we have demonstrated an enormous commitment to having Mount Sinai become a more equitable and anti-racist institution. We stand in solidarity against racism, and we are committed unequivocally to equity in health care. We have developed a roadmap for action, not just words, action. And here you see listed 11 strategies that we are committed to in terms of taking action. And also listed in, on the slide are some of our leaders, Gary Butts, Angel Palermo, Pamela Abner, Leona Hess, who have provided important leadership in developing our roadmap and strategies for action. So we have established you know, many programs to make our school a more anti-racist care and learning institution. And a number of those programs are listed on this slide, including programs addressing racism in medical and graduate education, a committee to address anti-Asian bias and racism, our Black Executive Acceleration Program, Chats for Change, which has now gone national, and a fellowship program to address disparities in LGBTQ healthcare. Other programs to make our school a more anti-racist care and learning institution. And they include a grant that we got from NIH to hire underrepresented early career faculty, initiative to decrease disparity in cancer clinical trials, partnerships with historically black colleges and universities, our LINC mentorship program, and our Mount Sinai Biomedical Laureate program designed to increase diversity among basic and clinical research faculty. The Office of Diversity and Inclusion, ODI, has the major leadership role in making Mount Sinai a more equitable and anti-racist institution. And this slide lists some of the major initiatives that ODI is taking. It's not inclusive, but it gives some of the key examples. Recently, over the last 22 months, we have established a research institute which is designed to reduce health disparities and health equity. And this is led by Carol Horowitz and Lynn Richardson. We want to understand and to develop solutions to issues related to anti-racism in practice and in healthcare in general. We want to be among the leaders that establish solutions and work to establish approaches that result in real change. As I mentioned earlier, Mount Sinai science is not just about publication. 
in top journals and getting grants. It's about making discoveries that change the lives of our patients. And Mount Sinai Innovation Partners is our change agent in this regard, led by Eric Liam and an outstanding uh, staff. And what is uh, listed on this slide is the results of Mount Sinai Science in working with Mount Sinai Innovation uh, Partners. Uh, one uh, one uh, fact to highlight here is that we, in the last uh, year, we have established 378 new patent applications. And these, these other metrics also indicate our success in, in making discoveries that ultimately could be commercialized or result in new startup companies. Mount Sinai Doctors Faculty Practice. Our faculty practice is among the largest in the country. And it is uh, associated with multiple sites throughout New York City. And our practice had to deal with the pandemic. And it's uh, important to emphasize that through the dedication of our faculty and staff, we were able to return to over 90% pre-pandemic treatment volume. And we are continuing to expand the, the faculty practice. And we're working very hard, literally right now, into to make sure as much as possible that our faculty practice thrives, even though we're now dealing with another major surge in COVID-19 infections. We are now still in the midst of our capital campaign that we call Limitless, which is good because we need to raise a lot of money for all of our initiatives. Uh, led by our development team, run by Mark Costigan, we've been very successful. Our goal is $2 billion, maybe even more. And so far, as of January 5th, 2022, we are 64% toward that goal, having raised $1.28 billion. And 2020 was a very good year, uh, even though we're in the middle of a pandemic where we uh, raised uh, over $270 million. With all the work we're doing, the success of our research programs and our clinical programs, both growing, both being innovative, we always need more space. So we have several initiatives that have started in the past year and will continue through 2022. We will be establishing a Mount Sinai Discovery and Innovation Center on the West Campus at 787 11th Avenue. It will house major research programs of the school and also provide additional space for clinical pro uh, programs for Mount Sinai West. On the Upper East Side campus, we are doing a complete renovation of our building at 3 East 101st Street. It will essentially be a new building and it will house research programs associated with artificial intelligence, genetics, and other key areas. So uh, in closing, le let me uh, sincerely thank all of you for a job well done. It took dedication, courage, commitment to accomplish what you have all done together in terms of providing clinical care in the midst of a pandemic to continue to train the best and brightest students and, and um, house staff, to thank our students for pitching in when they were most needed, to congratulate our scientists, to continue to do great science that makes a difference. You know, really I can go on and on, but it makes me very proud of all of you for what you've accomplished. As I mentioned, adversity reveals character, and no, nobody can compete with Mount Sinai when it comes to having the character to do what you have done over the last 22 months, so thank you.